Jamie and John, thank you so much for coming out to talk SEO with me. Appreciate it. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. Finding a good SEO partner that specializes in content marketing can be hard. Since 1999, Internet Marketing Ninjas has built its reputation on SEO and content marketing strategies. Internet Marketing Ninjas is run by Jim Boykin. I've known Jim for close to 20 years now. He's been a very hands-on SEO, he's a very hands-on CEO as well, and he's built a great team at the Internet Marketing Ninjas. From what I hear, their clients are very happy with them too. The Internet Marketing Ninjas could also help you with your core web vitals and page experience update. They're very hands-on with that. They'll make the changes for you, not just provide the audit. So check them out at internetmarketingninjas.com. How you guys doing? Everything good? Everything's good. Great, yeah. yeah. All right, so we did this quiz, um, this Kahoot game. I think it was pretty fun. I'm not sure if the, the viewers are going to actually watch it before or after or during, so that's going to be a surprise for me after I edit this video. Uh, but <laughs> can we go through and just quickly say, you know, Jamie, can you tell people in this camera who you are and what you do? Yes. Jamie Clark, uh, currently VP of SEO at a company called Centerfield, um, where I oversee organic search um, across multiple verticals, about 14 websites, um, and I've been there for a year. It's a lot, and you, you have. A, I was before you came in. I did like an intro video. You both have crazy amounts of SEO experience and history, which is pretty cool. Usually, I don't meet so many people that have that type of history. Plus, working in some massive with massive clients and also massive um, companies. And John, can you tell people who you are in this camera? So. Sure, uh, John Clark, um, the uh, managing uh, partner of Moving Traffic Media. We're a performance digital marketing agency uh, located in uh, New York. Cool. And you're one of the few SEO couples. You guys are married, and I think you guys, you meet? I've seen your history. You both worked at Razorfish, right? <laughs> That's where you met? Or no? Yep. That yep. is accurate. <laughs> we, uh, we met at Razorfish, um, started, a, you know, hanging out outside of work and um, kind of formed a, a friendship that turned into to much more, obviously. Um, <laughs> And you were the director of SEO at Razorfish. Yep. While you were just an SEO analyst, that's a lower level, higher level, different job. So yes, all, all of those things technically. <laughs> However, important clarifying point. <laughs> <laughs> Once John became our team leader, um, previous we were you know working on on separate accounts. You know how agencies are, and they they split you up like that. Um, different verticals. Uh, then I knew it was time to move on, and that's, you know, luckily when the New York Times opportunity came along, and I was very happy to go in-house after the agency machine for, like, five years. Yeah, um, people talk about that, like, agency work versus uh, working in-house in a company, and there's pros and cons of both, yep. whereas, from maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the, the higher level thing around in-house work, you get to work um, on things in more detail yep. and see the reward in a much more deeper way maybe. And like you see the reward faster, I guess. Whereas if you're doing agency work, it's like you can only put a certain amount of hours into it. You gotta rush it. You don't always get the results back sooner than when you want them to be. Yep, absolutely. I think agency was a great, it was almost like SEO fast track college type of situation because there were such robust teams, people to learn from, experts, content, link building, each like piece of it. Um, but to your point, when you dive in house, you have a closer investment in the product, the end result, um, buy-in, the business goals, the vision, all of that stuff. And you get to see it through end to end. So it's a different type of reward versus here are my recommendations, hand it off. If you right. implement it or not. That always amazed me how much companies would spend on, on SEO, but not actually yeah, implement. Never do anything. Exactly. Yeah. And you both experienced both, meaning you worked agency, now in-house. You worked in-house, then agency, right? Then that correct. back to in-house, then to agency. Yeah. So you both experienced the both, and now you're, agent, you're running your own agency, right. so it's a little bit different. Right. Um, so you, just going back to, you know, Jamie, you, you worked at Rosetta early on. Yes, that was my first SEO gig. Link builder, full time. Link builder, full time. Oh yeah, spreadsheets. Just building links. Directories. Interesting. All, all that good stuff. Templated in 2009, emails. that was before Penguin, so it worked. Yeah. Yep. It yep. worked well. 
the only person I know that worked at Rosetta, it could be other people I knew, um, Chris Boggs. I don't know if he was there when you were there. Yes. Yes, he was. Okay. And you were in the same area, in the same office, or no? So we weren't in the same office. I was in the New York office, and he was uh, based in Ohio. Okay. Um, but yeah, he was definitely, you know, the guy running the things oh, okay, he was. That, that I run the SEO team looked up, up to in that way. All right, cool. So that's the only yeah. SEO I knew at Rosetta, but... Yeah, I have a long relationship yeah. with. I knew him since two thousand two, probably. I look, yeah, I look older than I am. I'm really not that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you moved to at the after the after the reset, Then you went to Razorfish. I'm sorry, Reprise. Yep. I know, but I guess you also have Reprise also. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I think the great thing about Rosetta was there was a really robust SEO team, um, in each part of SEO, but that did make it a little hard to move out of your lane if you will so oh. um jumping to reprise who luckily for me was understaffed in that capacity i got to do a little bit of everything across like strategy analytics a little bit of technical content where my opportunities were a little bit more limited at rosetta interesting so i interviewed one person who currently works at reprise i doubt he was there dan topple i don't think he was there when you were there um Anyway, and then Razorfish, where a lot of SEOs and a lot of people work there. Yeah, and Razorfish had um, a, a really great hotbed of talent. Mm -hmm. At least in my experience, everyone was really smart, went to great places, creative agency as well. And that's where you met him and decided, I gotta get out of here. I can't, I can't work at Absolutely. Razorfish anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in a, in a, in a work setting, um, especially when I got promoted, there was there could have been a, you know, a, a sense of maybe favoritism or something like that. And so, um, you know, the, the New York Times opportunity was amazing. I think it allowed our relationship to flourish a little bit more because we were, you know, not working together and, you know, spending time outside of work together. And, you know, you kind of remove that, uh, that potential issue that, that someone might have, yeah. And you spent almost eight years at New York Times. I did. I'm working a lot on Wirecutter, which is like yes. known as the SEO. Like, and every SEO wants to be that good. Like, as far as yeah, that. it's it. It really was a special time. Um, I think a lot of it, or my experience at New York Times, I was very much like at the right place at the right time. Even when I started, um, Razorfish actually built the first iteration of the uh. New York Times website. So I have a feeling that when I interviewed my boss who had worked with Razorfish was maybe like, oh, this girl's probably good because that experience was awesome. Um, <laughs> and then again, like right timing of the digital transformation of the newsroom. I had that, you know, wind in my sails, if you will. So just building out SEO there was, was really exciting and I had a lot of people to learn from. And then as most big publishers do, especially coming from print, realize that they need to find ways to diversify revenue streams. Um, I had never heard of Wirecutter when, you know, they looped me into like, what do you think of this website? Do you think there's potential to grow? I was like, oh, this is interesting. Yeah, sure. How are they doing so well? And, and it was the time of like long form content wins everything in search. Um, so yeah, one thing led to another. We acquired Wirecutter and our head of product at the time moved over uh, to be GM of Wirecutter and convinced me to come over and build out Search at Wirecutter, where previously, believe it or not, everything was almost by accident. Um, they had never had like a full-time search person. Um, but fast forward to, you know, how many years later, I think the way Brian Lamb really built Wirecutter and you know the best practices of what Wirecutter was going to be uh, just led to everything that it takes to win in product review space and search today. So, right, and we'll get into the that topic soon. It this you're right. Looking at your your history, it does look timing was really really like you just left Razorfish right after Panda, probably right before Penguin or around that time. New York Times, I'm sure. Panda really benefited them tremendously. Also Penguin. Absolutely. Yep. And then Wirecutter timing 
yeah, I mean, you got that site probably when it was underachieving in SEO and we were able to like, I know SEO, I'm going to make it explode. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, it was, you know, manifest destiny. And then there was whole, this whole controversy around wire cutter and cutting people's affiliate commissions or something I mean, like some type of like, you can't, probably can't talk about that, but there was some type of scandal recently, not scandal, but what was it? Where like they went on strike or something? This is probably before you, uh, after uh, you left. You mean like the, the union stuff? It was something, somebody, they went in the wire card, they went on strike or something right before the holidays shopping season. Yes, yes. But you left before that. My you, time. you anticipated yes. that was going to happen, so you left before that would actually, right. that timing was perfect. So. <laughs> <laughs> Again, me with the timing. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're at Centerfield. You want to describe what that, you're the, you're the VP of SEO there. Yes, cool. yes. Uh, so Centerfield is a lot of things. We have a, a pretty robust data operations. Um, and then a few years ago, Centerfield um, acquired a few owned and operated websites. Um, so you can kind of think of it as almost it feels like an agency and that there are multiple verticals we play in. Um, security, couponing, senior space. B2B. Um, however, unlike an agency, we actually have all the resources in-house. So product engineering, editorial teams. Um, so I manage SEO on the owned and operated side, um, along with, with my boss, Brock Bozer, who I think you may know from the Click Ads days. I'm not Text sure. Click Ads. Yes. Oh, he's there. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Arts. It's been a long time since I spoke yeah. to him. Yeah. We actually built the back end structure for TextLink ads, which Google hated. I remember putting <laughs> um, <laughs> Patrick Gavin, which was the one of the like owners of TextLink ads, Brock worked with him, putting him and Matt Cotts in the same room to talk. Because <laughs> obviously TextLink ads was a completely right, like, yeah. you know, Google hated that. And I think Patrick was a little bit scared about that meeting, but I think they ended up selling the company um, and then yep. they're on to new things. So yeah, definitely set regards. That's great. Yeah. Cool. All right, so let's move on to John, your career. Sure. Um, so you started a few years before your wife um, doing online marketing back in, at HydroWorks. Yeah, so HydroWorks was uh, a startup company in Middletown, Pennsylvania. They basically manufactured and sold aquatic therapy pools. So, you know, you blow out an ACL and you use kind of this treadmill in the floor um, to rehab the knee. So their primary clients were hospitals, physical therapists, um, universities, colleges, NFL teams, that sort of thing. So um, what type of work do you do there to like get traffic to this? So, you know, it, it was right out of college. Um, and as a lot of startups are, you know, they need help, but they don't really know what sort of role to fill. So they brought me on as a marketing assistant. And probably for the first couple of months, I was like packaging up or stuffing envelopes essentially and, and mailing them out to leads, which was awful. Um, and one day uh, the CEO came in into our office and said, hey, you know, we have this, this AdWords account that we just started, um, you know, see what you can do with it. Um, and I was immediately fascinated by the idea that you could, you know, create, uh, I think at the time it was 70 characters and entice someone to click and actually give their information to you. I thought that was incredibly fascinating. Um, I bought a book, read it in, uh, you know, uh, cover to cover, and started implementing some of the ideas and, and um, tips that were included in that book. And over the course of the couple of years I was there, we basically shifted the entire marketing model from heavy into trade shows and those sorts of things, which were really expensive. Um, to almost fully online. So kind of revolutionized how they were acquiring leads um, and shifted it almost uh, totally online. So it was a great experience um, very early on in the Google Ads days, um, you know, back when Yahoo was still Overture. Um, yeah. And, you know, that, that experience kind of hooked me uh, in, into this space. Um, yeah, and you've been to many companies since then, so mm -hmm. it's all been search related, which is cool. You yep. even spent some time at Microsoft. What would you do at Microsoft? You worked on their ad team. Yeah, so uh, very much like Google um, has their own kind of um, you know uh, ad support. Uh, I was basically that for um, Microsoft uh, 
kind of their premium client. So we would go in essentially trying to get to them to spend more, um, but strategically do that across the Microsoft platform. Um, and back then it was mainly about just creating massive keyword lists because the volume was just so small. You basically had to build 3x the number of keywords that you might have in your Google account to generate any kind of meaningful uh, click traffic. So um, we worked with everyone from you know Toyota and Volkswagen uh, to um, uh, or a couple others. Um, was Satya and Nadell in charge of that team at that point, or it was before Satya and the current CEO of Microsoft? No, was, so um, so I remember meeting with him. I forgot when it was timeline, but he was just like in charge of like Microsoft Search or whatever MSN. Yeah, so it. these this was back in the Steve Ballmer days, yeah. um, and uh, no, I don't believe Satya was was involved at that point. Uh -huh. So I was there kind of when they transitioned over to Bing, and you know they were trying to. There's a lot of like awkwardness around that time from yeah. MSN to Bing to Ad Center now to Microsoft Advertising, trying to find themselves. They finally, after you left, they finally found themselves. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, I mean, it was, it was, an, it was an amazing mm -hmm. experience because um, their internal tools were incredibly lacking. Like they hadn't even developed the desktop um, uh, kind of console or you know, support tool that allowed you to do things a lot more right. automated. So even for us who were sitting kind of in-house, um, it was a lot of manual uploads and a lot of manual work. And so, um, you know, they got into the space but hadn't really figured out a way to automate it in a, in a, in a, in a meaningful fashion. So with the evolution of Bing, um, they started investing a lot more in those tools. A lot of really smart people um, in-house were developing their own tools as well. So uh, as that automation got better, it's much more, um, you know, strategic role that we could provide. Right. Interesting. And at that point, you were pretty much mostly on the paid side, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you joined a company. You were there at Microsoft for about two years, and you joined another company, PPC for Hire, for about five, six years. And so, P yeah, PPC for Hire was another one of my uh, kind of side hustles. So oh, okay. I, I originally started doing, like, freelance work um, back when I was at Interactivate, which was back in San Diego. Uh, and then when I moved uh, to New York to work at Microsoft, um, you know, picked up a couple more clients. So at that point, I was still kind of mostly doing paid search work. Um, and PPC for Hire for me was kind of less about building a company at that point, but it was more about building a website and trying to learn more about HTML and just the infrastructure of a site. Um, at Interactivate, I sat in an office with SEOs and paid search uh, folks. So I was exposed to SEO uh -huh. initially back then and was really interested um, in kind of that, that, uh, that, that channel. And so one of the ways I learned best is just kind of doing it. Trial so yeah, exactly. So PPC for hire uh, was more about like going through the process of buying my first domain, you know, building a, a, a website myself um, and learning, you know, what, what sort of things I needed to tweak or modify, uh, to, to get ranked highly. And being able to sit in a room with those SEO guys who were like, no, nah, you should do it this way, or you know, think about coding it this way was incredibly helpful uh, just for me in, in, in my career and kind of learning uh, on my own. And then, oh, during that time, I guess you were at Razorfish also at some point. Yeah, so uh, when Microsoft and Yahoo kind of formed their partnership, um, Yahoo kind of took over the servicing, yeah. Microsoft kept the, the kind of technology side. So we kind of had, you know, an end date uh, effectively. Um, and we knew it well in advance, which was kind of nice. So we were able to go and interview and kind of find what our next role would be. Um, and uh, Razor Fish reached out to me on LinkedIn, uh, went in for a couple of interviews. And uh, before I knew it, I was there at the time, the, the first SEO in, in New York, um, which was you know a, a great place to be. Cool. Razor Fish to me was like one of the first when I started my like web development design company back when I was in high school in like 94 or something, Razorfish was there. Like mm -hmm. Razorfish was like, oh my, you want to be the yeah. Razorfish. Right. Yeah. And they changed their names a billion times. There's still Razorfish <laughs> on some level, but it's a- Yeah, they've reverted back, I think. It's yeah. <laughs> the, I, I'm the rid of that name. I think, I think it's great. But exactly. and you were there for a while, um, mm -hmm. and then you went to NBC in-house for a couple of years. Yeah. It um, must have been different. Oh, it's very different. You yeah. know, like- 
all of a sudden you went from wearing like t-shirts and shorts to, to work to like, you know, you have to kind of dress business casual at a minimum. Um, and you know, very rigid, like if you were a certain title, you got an office. So that was kind of nice, but, um, yeah, just a very kind of different, um, you know, internal environment, I would say. Um, we were also, um, you know, kind of building a startup within NBC. So we were helping launch basically all of their, um, mobile apps so video consumption for all the different channels and brands that they have so uh you know they had been charged with kind of building it um kind of growing the audience those sorts of things so the role was also a little bit different it, it, it kind of tapped into my paid search background um but still you know a little bit of the seo side as well so app store optimization optimizations of the mobile sites themselves um so that was kind of a nice marriage of all of that experience that I'd, I'd gained so far. Um, but it also exposed me to a lot of things I had no idea about, like video and um, kind of the uh, entertainment industry, which I really hadn't worked that much in before. Right. Um, so still an incredible learning opportunity uh, there. Then, um, so you from NBC, you decided to like start your own company with your former partner or work yeah, co so I had, um, I continued to kind of build my, my freelance, um, uh, work and continued to get more and more referrals, which is always a great way to grow and, um, kind of reached the point where I was trying to decide whether to, um, take on a new role somewhere else, uh, and start to turn down side work or kind of jump in with both feet. So, um, uh, you know, when NBC and, and I parted ways, uh, that was my next kind of um, challenge, I guess, was trying to build my own business. And I met up with a coworker uh, from Razorfish. Um, he'd been there about 10 years, and he was in the process of, uh, of leaving Razorfish and starting his own agency as well. And we started to partner and pitch business together. We kept winning it. Um, and you know, rather than treating each other as contractors of one another and basically like splitting the check and sending it over to, you know, one or the other, uh, we just decided it made more sense to kind of, you know, grow this agency together. So that was almost four years ago. Um, we're now uh, nine employees and, um, you know, uh, it's been a, been a fun, uh, sometimes stressful, but uh, enjoyable ride. And so Brian Williams' scandal had nothing to do with you leaving NBC. It was around the same time. I, looked, I just looked it up, right? It was. Is I that mean, craziness? There, the, what there, you know, there was um, a lot of maybe internal chatter, um, just kind of walking the, the hallways, if you will, um, water cooler talk or whatever. But uh, it didn't impact us so much, um, primarily because we didn't necessarily sit with that one uh, brand, I'll right. call it. So... Right. We were. You were at, you were at Third Rock. You were working at Third Rock, or no? We were across the street, across but street. we had a lot of meetings in Third in Thirty Rock. Yeah, yeah, which was kind of cool too. You know. It's, yeah, I was there once. Brian Williams actually interviewed me. Oh really? He wasn't there. He was. I was in this big camera, and he was somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Pre COVID, um, and it was about the Google um, Universal Search release where they had all different things. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I spoke to him and his person for probably like 45 minutes and I was probably on the air for about six seconds or something. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> so that's quite an editing job. <laughs> yeah, the, whole se the whole segment was like, Brian Lee introduced it. It was the whole segment was probably 15 seconds. So I don't feel bad that I was cut that much. Right, but yeah. yeah. It was pretty fun. Um, that, was, that was an experience. Um, you are one of the few people, Jamie, that have the title VP of SEO, right? Is that true or no? Because it was just, you just telling me before we got here that it's not really out there.